Welcome everyone to another APH virtual Excel camp. This week is junior high school and we are going around the world. Feel free to drop in the chat who you are and where you're from. We love to welcome you here. Again, as you're coming in, I'm going to let you know that this is the APH virtual Excel camp for junior high school and we are going around the world. We're so glad to have you join us today. If you need closed captioning, there was an update in software that's causing a bit of a hiccup. So I'm going to paste into the chat the link so that you can have your captioning streamed to you and you can still participate that way. Welcome, welcome. We're glad to have you with us. Again, you're here for the APH Virtual Excel Camp for Junior High School, and we're going around the world. Welcome, Dane. Glad to have you with us today. So that you know who is with us today, your instructors today are Heather Pichette Spencer. Hello, Heather. She is a teacher of the visually impaired. Hi, everyone. And Jennifer Stomach, another teacher of the visually impaired. Hi, Jennifer. Hey everybody. And Susan Drake. She is a student intern from Missouri State University. Hi, Susie. Hey guys, so glad to be here. We are glad to have you with you with us. And to get us going, I'm going to turn you over to your instructors, but feel free to use that chat and let us know you're with us today. It's all yours. All right. Welcome, everyone. I'm getting my screen ready to share. Here we go. Today, we're going to be talking about going around the world. Tips and tools that work anywhere. So we're going to start with a question. If you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? Type in your chat, type, type in the chat box where you would go. And if you have a reason you want to go there, you can type that too. We have an Ireland, Japan, Canada, London. Beach, somebody wants to see a beach. Great, Hawaii, Hawaii. New York, all over. Love it, wonderful. All right, well, we're going to be going through some different countries today and talking about ways to get around when you're visiting there or if you want to live there someday. Anything is possible. Okay, so what are some ways that you can travel around your town right now, wherever you live right now? How do you get around? Do you use a cane? Do you use a monocular, sighted guide, cars? Okay bikes. Canes and bikes are popular. What about tra traveling with a friend? Ah, cars. So car seems to be the big, the big one for most people to get around. Yeah, walking with a cane or using a car. Does anyone use ride sharing apps like Uber or Lyft with your family or a bus? Any bus travelers here? No? Okay, good. Okay, so imagine that you wanted to travel to another country or another city. How do you think you would get around there? What might you do different or the same that you do now? Or what might you add? Go ahead and type in the chat box. Yeah, a plane, right? If you wanted to travel somewhere far, you might get on a plane, a subway or trolley, love it. Taxi, yeah, bus or taxi, Uber, cars, planes, lots of different options, huh? boat, yep. Good, we're gonna be talking about lots of these things. Yeah, ferry. So a ferry is a type of boat that takes you from one place. Oh, Roosevelt Island tram. That was, that was specific, Susan. <laughs> Theo says a train. Good job, guys. Yeah. So there's all different kinds of ways to get around in different spaces. Let's see, we have a list coming up, a car, a taxi. You guys named both of those. 
Uber, other ride sharing service, so Uber or Lyft or something like that. And sometimes in different places, they have different names. A plane, if you want to go somewhere far, you might get on an airplane, a train. So some cities in the U.S. have a lot of um, subway or train transportation and others don't. So a bus, so a bus might be if you want to go somewhere local. So maybe you fly to another destination and then you get on a bus or you get on a bus in your city. A pedicab. Hey, can you guys type in the chat and let me know if you know what a pedicab is, if you've ever heard that term? Not me. Okay. So a pedicab is, um, it can be a bicycle that somebody wheels around or uh, usually they're bicycles and you sit in a seat behind the driver that's on a bike and they ride you around the city that way. They actually have them um, in Florida in St. Augustine nearby where I live and it's just a nice way to see the city. Yeah, it is. It's pretty cool. So some countries have a lot of pedicabs, also a boat. Yep, it is very slow. Oh, and you're right. <laughs> so yeah, sometimes there's ferries in cities. If the city is on a river, that will take you down the river, things like that. Horse-drawn carriage, I love it. Yeah, Leanne, that's one we hadn't thought of. Definitely another way to see the city, like New York City and sometimes certain cities have horse-drawn carriages. A ferry is another type of boat that would take you from usually a short destination from one part of a city to an island or something like that. Ew. So a subway is an underground train that goes within a city. So it stays within a certain city and it, tra it goes all around the city. Like New York City has a very big subway system. So that's the way a lot of people get around New York because it's more affordable than renting a taxi and most people there um, don't have their own cars because there's not enough space. So a trolley is another type of transportation and that one is kind of like it's like a single train car but it's usually on a track it's on a track like a train and it usually has an overhead line that it's connected to. Yeah, it's kind of like between a bus and a train and it, it runs along the line. So some cities like San Francisco have very famous trolley lines. So that would be another form of transportation that you could use. And a monorail is another form of a train, but it only has, instead of two train tracks, it has one train track in the center. And so hence the name monorail. There's a famous one at Disney. A lot of cities have little monorails that take you from one part to another, or maybe just through the downtown. And then a rickshaw. So a rickshaw is, um, you might see these in other countries like India. It's kind of like a pedicab, except that the person is usually walking. And so they have two handles that go behind them and they pull you in with the handles. So it's a lot of work on the person's back. I can't imagine doing that. Um, helicopter is another one. So we have airplanes and helicopters. So helicopters you usually use on like a short flight. And sometimes you might helicopter over a city to kind of get an idea of the city. Jets, yeah, jet, jet plane too, like a jet airplane. Great. So when we want to travel somewhere, what do you guys think the most important thing to do is? Whoops. Before you travel, what do you think you need to do? Ow. Yeah, bring clothes, Jen pack, yeah, plan. Definitely, planning is the biggest thing for traveling. Whether or not you have good vision, you still need to plan. You have to think about where you want to go, who you're going to go with, and what do you need to bring with you. So the further in advance you can plan, the more things you can get figured out before you go. Um, that will make your trip more relaxing and easier on you. So you can understand your needs as a traveler with vision impairment. You know, what kinds of extra things might you need that your friend who doesn't have a vision impairment might not need? You might need a cane, you might need a monocular, you might need more than one monocular. You might need one to look for street crossings and you might not read a, need another one for 
closer things that aren't so far away. So you might need an 8x and a 4x, depending on if you're a monocular user, you could use different types. Also, if you're going, if you're staying in America, we have the Americans with Disabilities Act that has a, gives Americans a lot of rights with travel and our signage is posted at certain heights and certain, certain ways so that it's more accessible. Some other countries might not have those same kind of accessibility features. So it's a, it's a matter of planning and learning and knowing where you're going and what kinds of things you need to know to travel there. There's also, um, if you're going to another country, there's also things called visas and it's not a credit card. It's, it, it's something that you have that, it's a document that allows you to enter that country and tells how long you can go for and what you're doing there. So you might have like a tourist visa. So when I went overseas to Australia once, I had a tourist visa or a student, I had a student visa. I was a student over there. And so it allowed me to stay in the country for the whole semester and then I had to leave at the end. You're not allowed to overstay your restriction, overstay your visa, or you can get in trouble. So. Julie just came in. We're just talking about different modes of transportation and planning for if you're going, when you're going on a trip. All right. So we're gonna go, we're gonna pretend that we're going on a trip and talk about the different features of the place that we're going. So we have a big map on the screen and it's it's got choices of United States, Canada, Europe, Central America, Africa, South America, and Australia. So we're gonna take a vote by typing in the chat of which place you would like to, to go. Owen says, I wanna go to China. Daya says, Canada, China. We have two for China, Japan, Australia, two Australia. Canada, Africa, China. Okay, I think we have a few for China. So we'll start off in China. So I'm gonna click the map for China. Okay, so China is a big country. Whoops, I got too far ahead. Make, made up of a lot of provinces. So on the screen is a map of China and there are just a ton of different provinces that make it up. Most of them I can't even pronounce. So it's also made up of big cities and rural places. And traveling in the big cities is very different than traveling in the rural places. The big cities have a lot more accessibility features and different things. So the way that you travel might be totally different depending on which part of China that you're going to. So there's different ways to get around China. You could take buses or taxis, ride a bicycle, walk, they have subways in the big cities. They have light rail, so that's just a train that goes, goes around a city or between cities. Hang on, I'm getting... They have, um, and then to go further in China, you might take an airplane from one part of the country to the other. You might take a ship from one port to another port, a cruise ship. You could um, take a different train, a bigger train. They have a really fast there, fast train there, um, buses, or you might hire somebody to drive you. So a little bit of information about China. There's more than one language. There's a lot of languages, but the primary language is Mandarin. And there are 23 provinces that it's divided into in five autonomous regions. The government is the People's Republic of China and it has 1.393 billion people. That is a lot of people. It's got the most population of any place in the world. So I could see why you'd wanna visit. 
So how could we make travel in China accessible to us? In large cities, China has something really cool. It's called tactile guideways. So in America, we have some yellow strips, usually right before we get to um, a curb. And it tells you that you're coming to the end of the sidewalk. And in China, they have those, in some of the bigger cities, they have those strips all along the sidewalk so that somebody could follow it. Another way that you might want to walk is to use a GPS map, maybe like Blind Square or something that tells you how far away things are. Um, you could translate different things using Google Translate, taking a picture on your phone and translating it. If you wanted to ride, you could take a train, bus, taxi. So the mainland, um, China uses uses uh, Mandarin Chinese for the for the standard for their Braille. So if you wanted to read something in Braille, it would be in Mandarin in mainland China. Okay, what else are you guys wondering about traveling around China? Can you type in the chat? Grace asks, what is Blind Square? Oh, okay, so Blind Square is an app. It's a GPS app. Um, there's a free version of it right now that you can get. It's normally a paid app, but it tells you exactly how to get somewhere using your, you can use your phone to find out exactly where you are and where you need to go. So if you wanted to go to a certain restaurant and you were in China and you could type in your location and then it would just tell you um, exactly how to walk to get there or how, how to get there. Oh, here we go. Yeah, you could connect. Good. Jennifer said you could connect to the Wi-Fi in different locations, download the maps and directions. You might need to buy a SIM card, right, Theo? So these are things that we would think about ahead of traveling, right? Is bringing those extra things with us. Yeah. Good. You guys are answering each other's questions. I love it. Right. Has anyone here been to China? That's a very good question, Alyssa. Uh, my dog is barking, Owen, oh, sorry. She got excited. I was just in China, okay. Oh, is it just in China? Blind Square, Blind Square, no, Blind Square is in America too. Yes, great, okay. So lots of different things. You could also, again, use your monocular to spot things. Okay, Ellery said she was born in China, but doesn't really remember much, yeah. I'm gonna click the cloud and go back to the map. Yeah, oh, and I think Blind Square is in, is in, I would definitely check it out and see if you can find things in Little Rock with Blind Square. So Hannah, a monocular is like a little telescope that you hold up to your eyes. Hold up to one eye to see far away. Yeah, so if you're totally blind, you could use your cane or Ari, I, is it Ira, A-I-R-A, or Aria? Yes, that's another GPS app, very good. Yeah, right, so you do have to consider data and things because you would be roaming. Okay, good. You guys, you guys are so smart. I love these questions that you're asking. Jen, can you tell me how we get back to the map? I clicked something on accident. Slide four, I believe. Thank you. There we go. Okay, so where to next? We have Australia, South America, Africa, Central America, the US, Canada, Europe. We have a vote for Europe, Africa, Canada, Europe, Australia, Australia, Australia mate. <laughs> okay, so we got a lot of Europe, Australia, and Canada. Okay, so let's start with Europe and then we'll go to Australia and Canada. So I will probably forget, so somebody remind me. Okay, so let's go to Europe. 
So Europe is a continent made up of a bunch of different countries, right? We have France and Spain and um, the UK, which includes England, Ireland, and Scotland, Norway, Sweden, um, all the way to Italy, Turkey, Romania, um, Ukraine, lots of different countries in Europe. So um, the thing about Europe is most of those countries speak a different language. So there's lots of different languages in Europe. Has anybody been to Europe? Can you share in the chat if you have been to Europe to visit or live there? Let's go to Germany. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Somebody put the, Jen put the Blind Square um, website up. Thanks, Jen. Yeah, Jennifer has been to Europe. All right, and so is Julie. Great. Okay, so we have a couple people that have been to Europe, have, have traveled there. Vacation in Norway, anyone? Yeah, that sounds good to me too. So daily transportation in Europe, ways you might get around. Um, they use a lot of public transportation there. Depending on where you are um, in the US or the territories, you might be used to riding in a car all the time. In Europe, a lot of people use trains. Subways are very popular, buses, um, sometimes taxis and trams. Yeah, coffee in Paris sounds good to me too. Um, but they don't use cars, especially in the big cities, the same way that we do. Um, as Americans, we're very dependent on cars. So it's a lot more traveling with other people. So if you want to go from one city to another city in Europe, that would be more of a distance transportation where you would, again, use a train, a bus, or a plane. You probably wouldn't use a taxi because it would be very, very expensive to take a taxi from one city to another. So the thing that we have to think about are all the different accessibility features on trains, planes, there we go. I'm trying to make this chat so I can see both. There, okay. Who let me be in charge of this? <laughs> okay, guys, here we go. So yeah, you might use a train, a bus, or a plane to get for, from, say you wanted to go to Paris, from Paris to, um, to Madrid, Spain. So if I wanted to go from Paris, France to Madrid, Spain, there's actually a train that would take me, it would take me from one city to the other, and it's a long trip, so it may be an overnight trip. Sometimes there's buses, you might take, um, you might take a boat if you needed to get over to the UK from Europe, to the United Kingdom, to England. So lots of different ways. So then we think about mobility and using, would I wanna use a cane there even if I don't use one all the time? I might wanna use one to identify myself as not being able to see very well. A white cane is a, definitely an international symbol that people see and they might, they might be helpful. Okay, so a little bit of information about Europe. Um, there are about 200 languages spoken in Europe. There's 51 countries altogether. There's different types of governments in the different countries. And a lot of the big main countries like are part of what's called the European Union. And so the European Union has their own accessibility um, requirements for different countries. For example, they have better braille labeling than we have in the United States. They have pharmaceutical braille labeling. So if you go and you need to buy some Tylenol or something like that in Europe, it will probably have a braille label on it so you know what you're getting, which is really cool. I wish we had that here. We definitely need to make that more of a thing. Okay, somebody knows some people from Germany. Wonderful. Yeah, train, Jennifer says trains in Europe are so awesome. Are they luxurious? So some of them are luxurious, um, especially if you get one that is a sleeper train or something like that. Yeah, so. Um, do blind canes look the same, same in different countries? So a lot of countries, they use the international um, white cane with the red tip to denote, to denote blindness. That's a very good question. There's, a different, there's different types of canes, um, but most of them are white with, with a red tip for sure. Okay, 
so for walking around Europe, Europe is also, a lot of the cities are very walkable. A lot of people walk, um, just like a lot of people here, if you've ever been to New York City, they walk around a lot more than we do and um, not, don't use cars. So they have audible signals like we, ha we have at some places here. Again, you could use apps with GPS, you could use a human guide in your cane. Um, I had some friends that went to Europe and it was, my friend and his wife and they're both blind. And I remember just being like, wow, that's so wonderful. How did you guys get a, get around? And they said, we just followed our noses. We went from cafe to restaurant and just kind of asked around. So wherever you're traveling, whatever, um, it's always good to be friendly and get to know people and, and ask questions. And you get a lot of good information from locals that way. Especially if you can speak the language or even attempt to speak the language a little bit. Okay, yeah. Um. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, Grace, you're right. Is the, Grace has corrected me. She said she has a cane with a black grip, mostly white, a little red at the bottom and a white tip. You're right. I meant I meant red at the bottom and then the white tip is, is the typical cane, but it's the it's the white stick of the cane, the white body of the cane with the red at the bottom. That's that's the international cane thing. I didn't mean the tip was red. I misspoke there. Okay. Do you guys have questions or things that you would be interested in seeing in Europe? What about museums? How would you would explore a museum there? Owen said I might need a cane. Type in the chat what you would like to see in Europe. Yeah, using a cane and by touch, Jennifer's, that's how she would explore around, good. Yeah, museum staff would give you a guide, right. So you could, yeah, the Louvre, you could always ask. Um, it's always best to call ahead when you can and talk to people and see what kind of accessibility they have in their city and in the place that you want to go. So you could either call the museum or you could call some of the city services or look online. In my research, I also found some um, blind travel websites and travel we accessible travel websites, yep. Yeah, so the museum, it depends on the museum whether you can touch things or not, but you could ask. It never hurts to ask anything, right? You could have somebody describe things to you, right? So that's why it's always good to have a buddy to help you to, to, to describe what you can't see or can't see very well. Yep, you could also use sound or Ira. Ira, is it Ira? Somebody can help me with pronunciation. Yes, okay, good. Okay, let's go see where we want to go next. So we can out on any map and it'll, any of the slides and it'll bring you back here if you needed it. Oh, okay, thanks. Any I, of the clouds will bring you back there. I keep forgetting about the cloud. Okay, Brianna said I live by a marine museum and they do tactile tours. Right, so some, um, some museums will do a tactile tour, especially for people with visual impairments and that's always good to ask about. Okay, so we have Canada. Okay, so let's go to Canada. If you're in the US, it's our neighbor to the north. So Canada is divided into provinces. Here's a map of Canada. It's showing the different provinces all the way on the west coast, which is above Oregon um, in Washington. It's above Washington is British Columbia and above British Columbia is the Yukon. And then it goes all the way east to Newfoundland and Quebec and Nova Scotia. So lots of different provinces. Okay, somebody's saying they have been to Niagara Falls, Brianna. Ah, I have a friend from British Columbia, says Jennifer. Yeah, Canada has always been on top of, on top, it's America's hat. Okay, I love that, that's great. Okay, so again, Canada, like the US, how would we get around Canada? So like in a lot of cities in the US and a lot of towns, we might get around by car. 
some cities in Canada would have a streetcar, so that would be like a trolley kind of thing, or a bus or a subway. So the big cities will have subways, like Montreal and Quebec. Um, they have, yes, you could walk around Canada too. They have a good bus system. Um, they also have taxis there and ride share like Uber and Lyft. Okay, Rain's in Canada, good. So Rain, if you wanna share anything about Canada and how easy it is to go, okay, a car or a Lyft. So Lyft is another word for like a taxi. And there's also the ride sharing app Lyft, right? So to get around Canada, if you wanted to go far away, same thing, you would use a car, a bus, you might get on a plane if you wanted to go from one part of the country to another, if you wanted to go across provinces, or you might take a train. Or an Uber, yep. So Canada has two main languages, English and French, um, and it's a democratic government, just like the United States. The population is 35 million people, a little over 35 million people, and it's divided into 10 provinces and three territories. So they have both provinces and territories in the United States, just like we have states and a few territories here. Yeah, they have, yeah, they have boats for non-frozen parts of Canada. So Canada is not all frozen all year long. Um, they do have summer up there and Definitely, they have they have boats to go go around the um, the coast, just like we do the, in the United States. So, as far as Canada accessibility, they have we have the um, American Foundation for the Blind and the American Council of the Blind, and Canada has the Canadian Council for the Blind. There are a half a million people who are blind in Canada, just like um, the United States uses unified English Braille, so does Canada. That's their Braille code that they've adopted. Yeah, Jennifer says um, Canada is very similar to the northern US in summer. Yep. Yeah, there's one part of Canada that's actually um, south of the United States. Hang on, I got on the wrong slide again. Hang on, guys, give me one second, let me go back. I can go back to that cloud. There we go. Okay, so to get around Canada and make it more accessible, you might wanna use Google Maps, Google Translate if you're in a French part of Canada and you speak English, um, public transportation, Canada also has some money, money that has tactile indicators, which is a little bit different than the US and that's pretty cool. And again, you could use same kinds of things that we use in the US and anywhere. We could use our canes, we could use monoculars. If you have some vision and you wanna see far away, a little bit further away. all the same kind of stuff that we use here, we could use, we could use in all of these different countries. All right. Hold on just one second, Miss Jen is gonna work the... Okay, some examples of Canadian money with tactile symbols on them. Get back to that slide. Yeah, so it has um, the $5 bill. It looks like a full braille cell, one full braille cell with the six dots. And like a $10 bill would have two full braille cells. A $20 bill would have three. $50 would be, have four um, next to each other. And then $100, 
would have two braille cells, but there's a big space in between. So it's a braille cell, space, space, another full braille cell. That is pretty cool. I love that. Good question, guys. Okay, so where should we go next? We went to Canada. Do you have any? Oh, Australia. Yeah, we had a few for Australia. Okay, let's go visit Australia next, guys. So Australia, there's a map of Australia on the screen right now, and it's divided into territories. So instead of states or provinces, they call them territories in Australia. Um, all the way to the west is Western Australia. So that would be their west coast, like our west coast is California, Oregon, and Washington. Their west coast is all one big territory called Western Australia. And on their east coast is where they have their capital um, over by their east coast, which is Melbourne. And they have big cities on the east coast of Sydney and Brisbane. And those are in the um, different territories of Victoria, New South Wales, and Queensland. Yeah, I know. I thought everybody thinks Sydney was the cap it is the capital of Australia, Jennifer. It's the most famous city, probably the biggest city in Australia. So I think that's why people think that. Like um, people from other countries sometimes think like New York City is our capital because it just happens to be like the biggest city that we have here. But yep, yeah. Canberra is the national capital and then Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Adelaide, and Perth are the state or territory capitals. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. See, I got it wrong. It's Canberra. I knew that too. I was just looking at Melbourne and Melbourne's bigger on the thing. So to me, that should be the capital. Yep. All right. Thanks for clearing that up, Ms. Jen. So that is Australia. So daily travel in Australia looks a lot like daily travel here in the U.S. So in between the big cities, there's also a wide expanse in the middle of Australia, of the outback. Um, and so for that, travel would be a little bit different, but daily travel around a city in Australia, you would take a car or a train, um, a bicycle, maybe even a motorcycle. You might walk, you might take a bus, you might take a ferry or light rail, which again is like those trains that are within cities. As far as distance travel, if you wanted to go from one side of Australia to the other, you'd probably take a, an airplane or a train. Some people like to go across the country in um, motorhomes or a camper van or a bus. Yeah, they use, Grace, that's a good question. They use UEB just like we do. So they use the um, Unified English Braille Code just like we do. So their primary language is English just like just like in the United States um, and the territories as we said are Western Australia, Northern Australia, South Australia, Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania. And Tasmania is a separate island. So there's the mainland of Australia and then there's Tasmania. It's all by itself down south. Um, their government is uh, called the Federal Government of Australia. And their uh, population is tw almost 25 million, 24.99 million. Yeah, that, that is nice about Unified English Braille. So most English speaking countries use Unified English Braille. So instead of having different Braille codes, they we've all kind of tried to make it the same. So it's easier and more accessible to people. Yeah, so there's schools in Australia, just like there are here. Um, I actually had the a chance to teach over there and they have things a little bit different. Um, Australian money is different than American money in that it's it's more like Canadian money where it's more colorful and pretty um, whereas ours is just the green and white theirs has different colors they might have yep okay so school there is a lot like school here um, except that kids in Australia a lot of times when they go out for recess they actually take off their shoes they're more of a naturalist country and I, I remember thinking that that was the coolest Monopoly money, Dane. <laughs> That's funny. I remember thinking that that was the coolest thing, that kids get to play in the dirt and go barefoot around um, during recess. 
Um, and so kids, sometimes the middle of Australia, there's a big open space in the middle of Australia that's not very populated. So there's little pockets of people here and there, but doesn't have cities or anything. And there, um, they used to, they were one of the first countries that had teachers teaching remotely. Um, so they would, and they had orientation mobility teachers and teachers of, of visually impaired TBIs would actually fly into the city that or the little town that they needed to go teach at if it was really far away. And I know they have this in um, Canada and some really remote places too, to go teach kids a certain number of times, you know, once a week or once a month or whatever they needed. But they didn't necessarily have, because there weren't enough teachers of blind kids to go to each area. We even have that in the United States, um, where I'm from Michigan, there's this place up, up north in the Upper Peninsula, and they actually have teachers sometimes sn snowmobile to the schools that are really far away. I thought that that was cool, yeah, in the winter. <laughs> so <laughs> they get their teachers one way or another. Yeah, that is pretty neat, Susan. So where, do, where are we going next, kids? Africa, South America, Central America, US. Yeah, Alyssa says US, Brazil. Do you know where Brazil is? Yeah, Brazil is in South America. So it looks like we have a couple for US and then a couple for South America. So let's go to the United States right now and then we can go to South America next. So the United States um, is made up of 50 states and some territories. So we have where I live now is Florida in the South, where Susan lives is right in the middle of the country in Missouri, right? Yep. And Miss Jennifer and Miss Leanne are also in Florida. Texas. Yeah, Texas is is the I think it's the second biggest state land wise, other than um, oh, we have people from Texas, California, all over. Yeah, type in the chat where you guys live. San Diego, Arkansas, okay. So a lot of people, Ohio, yep. Virginia, Washington, Arkansas. Great, yeah. So we have people from different parts of the United States. Wisconsin, yep. So that's up north in the Midwest, the same as Ohio. Arkansas is down south. Texas is in the south too, south of Oklahoma. Good. Okay, so the United States, how do we get around? What's in our daily routine? How do we get around here? What's the biggest way that most people in the US get around? Car, right? We're very dependent on cars. Yep, oh, and you're right, car. A lot of us drive, ride cars or ride in cars around. Yep, sometimes in big cities like New York, we might take the subway more, but most, most, um, most people in the United States rely on a car. So if you, um, a horse, yeah, some people in rural areas might ride a horse somewhere. Yeah, like Susan, if you live on a farm, you might take a horse into town to get your, get something that you need or to visit someone. Bikes, love it, yeah, bikes. And um, different cities have different accessibility as far as bikes, walking, RVs, yeah, lots of different ways to get around. So an RV is like a recreational vehicle. So it might be like a, they're usually bigger than a van. And um, sometimes people stay on them for, they camp on them or they go on them for an extended period of time and take them across, across different states. Yeah, Grace says trains. Yeah, so there is some train travel in the US and there's some light rail in certain cities. Um, Chicago has an elevated train. That means it's a train above ground. So it's like a subway, but it's above ground. And that one's called an L. Um, yeah, and like New York City has, and DC has lots of trains. Um, some people take boats. Yeah, sometimes people live on an island and they have to take a boat to get into the city to get to work, right? They might take a ferry. So they might even put their car on a boat and that's called a ferry to, to take it, right? Um, motorcycles, yep, different ways to get around. Um, a lot of Americans also use Uber. Sometimes people use buses to get around cities. 
So depending on where you live, there's lots of different transportation options. So if you want to go far away from the um, from one place to another in the U.S., you might you might ride in a car, you might take a car or a bus or a plane or a train, lots of different ways too. So there's trains that go across the United States. So how can we make travel in the US more accessible? Apps with GPS, a lot of things are ready, are GPS ready or easy to find with GPS in the United States because of all of the address systems that are already plugged in. Um, we have accessible pedestrian signals here. So um, a lot of cities have different sounds that the, um, the crossing signals make. So when you wanna cross at a light, it will make a chirping sound or a beeping sound. Some of them even talk um, and they're installing what's called tactile warning pavers that a lot of a lot of cities. I know our city just got them all over our neighborhood. Some of them are red bumps. Yeah, I've seen yellow too. So what that is, is it tells you that you're coming, you're coming to the edge of the sidewalk and into a curve or you're changing terrain, um, usually going into a street that gives you a warning that you're going to go into the street. Yeah, you might have them around your school too, Owen. Good. So what if you wanna ride on a bus? And this is anywhere, just not, not just the US, but um, say I wanted to, I'm visually impaired and I wanna get on a bus and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to tell where my stop is. If I was going to do that, when I got on the bus, I would tell the bus driver, hello, my name is so-and-so, I'm visually impaired. Would you please let me know when we get to my spot, get to my stop? And then I would, if I could see, I would look and see if the, spot behind the driver was empty or right across from the right behind the driver and across was empty so that they could see you or you could be really near them or ask them to direct you to a seat if you're not sure which seats are empty because you can't see well enough that's another way to do it um, and then definitely always talk to the bus driver or the whoever you can that works there if you're at an airport you can talk to the um, request assistant, you can ask, okay, yeah, Jennifer, if you can't see it all, so you would ask the driver when you got on the bus, can you direct me to an empty seat? And same with Grace, yeah, so you could tell them. And they might say, oh, the fourth seat back, so you might, yeah, or you might ask them to help you or ask somebody to help you. It's always good to ask for assistance. So as far as air travel, if you wanted to get on an airplane, you would, yeah, you do that with your O&M teacher, Alyssa, right. So these are things that you're, if you have an O&M teacher, they're gonna share how to do these things with you. We're just kind of going through a little overview today. Yeah, so if you wanna go to the airport, um, when, when you make your flight reservation, you can ask for accessibility, um, tell them, you could even let them know that you're visually impaired and you're gonna need some help. And so you can call the airport ahead of time before you travel and say, I would like somebody to meet me um, meet me at the, um, what's it called guys? The terminal, couldn't think of the word. Meet me at the terminal and somebody could, you can get assistance through the terminal. So you could get somebody to help you get to your gate if you're traveling alone, if you're traveling with family, they would probably help you, but things like that. And then once you get on the plane, um, I was reading a bunch of travel blogs and they definitely recommend talking to the flight attendant, talking to the gate agent, letting them know you're visually impaired, get to know their names. With any kind of travel, the more friendly you are and you kind of get, um, get to know people's names, the more they wanna help you. People love it when you, when you talk to them, especially ask them questions. A lot of times people wanna be really helpful and they're not sure what to do. So if you just take the initiative and say, I need some help because I can't see very well or I can't see at all. Would you please help me do this or get to here? A lot of people really want to help you. All right, so that is the US getting around. Where are we going next? Africa, South America, I wish. Okay, looks like Africa. So Africa is, is a very large continent. 
with made up of a lot of different countries. There's a picture of it on the screen. Yeah, so Jennifer said she knows two people from South Africa. So South Africa is a country down at the bottom tip of South Africa. Uh, I'm sorry, the bottom tip of Africa. So it's the southernmost country in Africa. And so Susan knows someone from Kenya. That's a country on the on the east side of Africa. Yeah. Um, and in South Africa, they actually speak English there. So that is an English speaking country in Africa. Um, Africa as a whole is made up of all these different countries and they speak a lot of different languages. Um, their primary languages are, are Arabic, Somali, Berber, um, Amharic, Oromo, Yoruba, Igbo, Swahili, Kwasa, Manding, and Fulani. Yeah, I believe that South Africans do use um, Unified English Braille. And there's 54 countries in Africa altogether. Berber is a language, Owen, that they speak in um, part of Africa. So the, Africa is unique too because each country has a different has its own type of government there's not one unified type of government for the whole continent um, and their population is 1.2 billion people so as far as getting around africa daily transportation they have motorcycle taxis so you might ride on the back of a motorcycle or in a sidecar they have commuter taxis, which is a personal car to take you somewhere, a taxi driver in a car that's hired. Um, personal cars, so you might hire somebody that's not an actual taxi, but you might hire somebody to take you somewhere. Um, rickshaws, we talked about that, that's where they pull you along, so you're sitting behind the person and they're walking and pulling you along. Um, and bicycles, so people ride around on bicycles there um, and walking. So that's to get around a city or a small area, you would use those things. As far as distance, if you wanted to go far away from what maybe one country to another, or one big city to another, or one city to, you might take a bus or a plane. Um, you could hire a car. People still hitchhike in Africa. Um, we don't really hitchhike in the United States anymore. But um, that's a safety thing. You'd have to be very careful. I wouldn't recommend hitchhiking to anybody. So it'd be probably safer to hire a car or to ride on a bus, something like that. So hitchhiking is um, when you ask somebody for a ride that you don't know, somebody driving down the road, you might put your thumb out. People used to put their thumb out and do that. That was something that they did a long time ago, but we don't really do that anymore. So guys, don't do that. <laughs> do not ever hitchhike. It's not safe because you don't know who is gonna pick you up. When you're, when you're on a bus or a plane or a taxi or something like that, the person um, has gone through some kind of screening generally to be able to drive that car and so, you have a better chance of being safe. Where if you're just having a random person pick you up and take you somewhere, you don't know what, what could happen. So yeah, yeah, it's getting in a random car and telling you to take them somewhere. I definitely would not do that. Okay. So Africa, same kind of, same kind of stuff. Um, the human guide, a monocular, a cane for riding or um, for walking, ride sharing, getting on a bus. Um, unfortunately, in Africa, they don't have a lot of wheelchair accessibility. So if you're in a wheelchair, it would be harder to get around. There's not things like ramps, braille signs, um, stuff that's available in more, more um, developed parts of the world, like we have here in the US and in Europe and in Australia. How would you tell if someone stopped your car and told you to go somewhere you did not know? Hmm. Yeah, so I wouldn't, that's why you would always wanna have somebody with you if you're going to another country, somebody that you trust and feel safe with so that they could help you for sure because that, yeah, that, that would not be safe. So guys, we just have a couple minutes left. 
Should we do one last place? What was left? China? Did we do China? We did? Okay. <laughs> do we, I think we got through most of it. Do you guys have questions about traveling? Are you excited to go? South America, okay. We can talk about South America just for a couple minutes. There we go. So South America is another continent um, made up of a lot, made up of seven countries. Their primary language is Spanish. So if you speak Spanish and you're going to South America, you're in luck. Um, so same kinds of things to get around South America, um, a bus, cars within each country that sometimes the roads are not in good condition so it's a very bumpy ride there um, to travel from one country to another you might take a bus or a plane yeah some susan said i always more feel more comfortable in a group when traveling so if you want to travel somewhere especially to another country it's always good to go on a guided tour to find a travel group to go with because then you're gonna have somebody that knows. Yeah, it's like driving over braille bumps. Somebody said that about South America because it is so bumpy a lot of places because they don't have the infrastructure, the road systems that we have in the, in, um, the United States and in Europe and in those kinds of places. Um, so yeah, the road system is still growing in South America. So it might not be as easy to get around there. So that's something to consider too when you wanna travel, you know, how safe it is, um, what the accessibility is, you know, where you can find a group tour to go with. There's even group tours for people with visual impairments specifically targeted at, at your audience so that they can help you get the most out of visiting a certain country. Yep. Okay, guys, we have to finish up in just a second. Do you guys have any questions? You can post them in the chat. What is tomorrow? So tomorrow we're going to meet a visually impaired American citizen who's currently living in another country. We're also going to talk about access once you're in the country you travel to. So what kinds of things, how do you access things in, the, how does she access things in the country? So yeah, think about questions to ask this person. So this is a, a young lady that graduated from high school only a few years ago and she's living in another country on her own and i think that is so cool so this will be pretty exciting we'll get to meet her tomorrow so definitely come back tomorrow with lots of questions and interest and you guys thank you for being awesome participants who is this person miss what a first name miss jennifer i think her name is shaquise but I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. She was Miss Jennifer's student. Yeah, oh, she was a political, okay. Yeah, Shaquise is her name. So she went to university and then she moved to another country. So that is pretty cool. And I want to say thank you so much. I am so glad all of you joined us to learn a little bit about all of these different countries. We hope we will see you again tomorrow. And tomorrow, if we can, if you would like to verbally ask your questions we'll have you raise your hand to be able to ask those questions verbally sometimes that's a little bit easier when we have a guest so again i'm going to say thank you so much i will be on the lookout for you tomorrow bye everyone bye thank you for coming